Good evening, everybody. I just want to thank God for bringing us back together again uh, for our Living Faith Bible Talk. Um, I'm William Clark, and I am your weekly host. I am happy um, because, as I say every week, God has been so faithful and so consistent um, in his caregiving for me. And I'm sure for those of you that are watching tonight, you have the same testimony. I'm excited tonight because we have a special guest who's going to help us close out our Living Faith series. Um, we have with us tonight Ashley Ramsey, and I'll allow her, allow her to introduce herself shortly. But I just want to make sure that uh, as we kind of get into discussion tonight, we really uh, leave this discussion tonight feeling like we've covered what we needed to cover when it comes to a living a life of faith and a life of purpose. Uh, so before we get started, I want to go ahead and uh, pray and then allow our guest to introduce herself and then we'll get into tonight's discussion. Father, I thank you for your, your grace and your mercy. I thank you for your purpose for our lives. And I thank you for how you've been teaching us and how you've been guiding us towards our own destiny and purpose. Although unique, uh, Father, you uh, have blessed us with gifts and skills that are meant to be shared for your glory and for the kingdom's glory. I pray, Father, that you're lifted up and glorified tonight by the discussion. And I pray that someone who's been searching for answers and searching for strategies and purpose, that they will find some of those answers tonight. And I pray these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So as I said, we got a special guest tonight, uh, Ashley Ramsey. Ashley, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself to the live audience? Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, again, my name is Ashley Ramsey, and uh, have have a lot of experience in um, uh, teaching the Bible and teaching the Word of God. I'm currently a member of the Rehoboth Church of God, and I'm in charge of a young adult ministry um, and we uh, minister to ages 18 to 30. Um, I'm also, by profession, I'm also a teacher and uh, a design technology teacher, so it's nice to be able to communicate via technology tonight. And um, I'm excited to be a part of this, and I believe, truly believe, in um, vision and destiny and uh, purpose. So I pray that everyone is blessed by what we are going to say. Certainly, and uh, as... Uh, as Ashley talked about tonight, we're going to be talking about vision and purpose. Um, so can you kind of give us a sense of what we're going to talk about tonight, Ashley, so that uh, everybody knows uh, what to expect, and then we'll go ahead and kind of allow for the question and discussion purpose uh, section. Absolutely. Well, uh, we know that everyone has been put on this planet for a purpose and for a reason, and God has ordained an assignment for each one of us to have to uh, to fulfill. Uh, the Bible says in Jeremiah 29 and 11, for I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper in you and to give you a hope in the future. And uh, it is our duty as, as believers, as Christians, to walk out that calling, that purpose that God has called us to. And I believe that um, that's what, you know, we're, we're going to delve into a little bit tonight. And vision is important. Um, the Bible says without a vision, the people perish. So it's very important that we have a vision for our own lives and that we walk out and fulfill the vision that God has given us and mandated for us on the earth. Okay. So with that said, um, what's the first scripture you got for us tonight? Uh, the first scripture, um, it comes uh, from Habakkuk 2. Mm -hmm. And many of us are familiar with that scripture. It says, for still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Okay, cool. So with that being said, you were probably going to have to read that um, a few times. Sure. Kind of walk us through um, what it takes to find our purpose in this life. I believe that really to find our purpose in this life, we really go to the creator. Uh, we have to go back to the foundation of why we were created and what our purpose is. First of all, we know that we were created to worship God um, and to be followers of Christ. Um, and that's, all, that's one of our main focuses and our main uh, purposes. Uh, but to find our vision, to find our purpose in life, to find where God is taking us, uh, we really have to seek God for his will and his desires for our lives. Um, we know that the word of God is the manual which gives us uh, the guidelines 
as to how we are to conduct our lives and it even gives us direction as to where we should go and, and what we should do. And I believe as according to scriptures, the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And I believe that as we walk out the word of God and walk out the, the, the path that he's laying before us, mm -hmm. I believe we'll walk into our purpose and we'll, we'll fulfill the vision that God has given to us. So then how would you advise those of us who are watching tonight um, the best way to search scripture and utilize scripture as a part of the process for finding our purpose uh, in this life? Um, it's as simple as, you know, trying to look at scriptures and trying to relate it to the situations that we are, we are currently in. Mm -hmm. and what we're facing. Um, and many times, uh, especially along the, the process of, of walking into my purpose, because I, you know, I, I've, I've always taught that I don't think we ever fully arrive there. You know, we're always trying to, to answer the call and do more for God, for the kingdom of God. But as we walk out that calling, I believe we ought to find what God is um, leading us into. Um, many times, uh, like for me, for example, uh, growing up as a preacher's kid, um, the path was kind of laid out for me. Uh, they, they already <laughs> told me, you know, uh, Ashley's a preacher, her mom's a preacher, her dad's a preacher, her grandfather's a preacher, you know, all of these preachers, you know, within my family. But I had to get into the word for myself so that I can come to an understanding of what is God calling me to. Perhaps yeah. it wasn't to the ministry of preaching the gospel. And it ended up being that. However, um, I found my niche within the ministry. I found that there was a group of young adults. There's a generation who was uh, seeking um, guidance and, you know, they needed that support and God was using me to do that. And so I think within, you know, seeking out scripture, finding finding the scriptures that relate to even where you are right now, um, finding scriptures that um, can can guide you into the future and, and can lead you to where God wants you to be, even looking at different people like Joseph, who, you know, at the beginning of his life, he had a dream and God spoke to him in a dream. And, um, you know, he had to actually walk out that path. You know, even though we may see ourselves greater than where we are, we also have to um, understand that there's a process, but I'm sure I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, no, that's fine. <laughs> but, no, that's um, totally fine. I think that we have to, you know, utilize scripture for where we are and for real, to, to really see where God is leading us. So let's talk a little bit about utilizing scripture for where we are um, and what we're going through. I understand that. You understand that. But to someone who may not be as into the word as we are because of the preaching profession, how do we find those scriptures that answers those those poignant questions that pop up in our lives? Like how, how do they how do we share with people that process of searching for scripture? Um, I think you know we have to understand that the word of God says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And so in order to encourage someone who may not be as strong in the faith, I think that continual um, teaching of the scripture, one of the things I do with, you know, people who I come into contact with that may not be as familiar with scripture is I, you know, I write down scriptures according to the situation that they're in. And I kind of tell them, you know, this is the version of the Bible that you should go to so that it can help you understand it a little bit better. And I, and, you know, I take time to teach it, teach the word um, to those um, who are understanding or, you know, may not have a full understanding of the scripture. But as far as, um, those who may be, you know, watching right now and they say that, you know, I, I don't understand all the scriptures. I would say start with, you know, simple for I know the plans that I have towards you and really pray and ask God to really reveal the scriptures so that you can understand what his purpose is for your life. I think that that prayer component in reading scriptures is very important uh, because a lot, a lot of times I read scripture uh, and I've, I've heard it several times and then I'll go back to it and there'll be a whole new revelation within sure. Scripture, and it comes through, you know, praying and seeking God and asking Him, God, what is it that you want me to understand through Scripture? Because you can read a Scripture, and I can read a Scripture and get two different things out of the Scripture, and it yeah. builds up in the faith differently than you. And so, I think it's very important for us to definitely develop our relationship with God, so that when we are reading Scripture, we're reading it for an understanding for where we are in our lives. That makes a lot of sense. I think one of the situations I reflect back to uh, was. Um, it was a time I was working in a uh, corporate environment, and 
I was dealing with the individual who created some challenges for me. And that's just a polite way of putting it. And I started, I, I was already reading the book of Proverbs as a part of my process of getting my daily bread. And what I mean by daily bread, for those that are watching, is um, if you read the Lord's Prayer, he talks about give us this day our daily bread, and ultimately the bread of, of life is the Word of God and, of course, our Savior Jesus Christ. So in the process of getting my daily bread, I was already reading Proverbs. What I noticed at some point while I was going through this situation was Proverbs became a very prophetic um, avenue for me to understand the, the tactics of the enemy. And to be more specifically, I felt like I was able to understand what the enemy was trying to do and what he was going to do at my job by simply reading the scriptures that God was pointing to me to uh, that morning. And so I felt like every time I went to work, I was able to uh, kind of understand and predict what the enemy was going to do next because the scriptures already told me. And subsequent, if you read Proverbs, it tells you how to deal with the enemy when you're confronted with specific situations. And for me, um, Proverbs became that go-to book in resolving a lot of challenges for me. I mean, do you have, have you had an experience similar to that where you can talk to us about that? Uh, as far as scripture guiding me? Yeah. The word of God says that the word of God is a light unto our, our path. It, it mm -hmm. lights the way. And the, the word of God is supposed to give us direction. Um, and I believe absolutely that scripture has a way of uh, directing us and really revealing to us what is going to happen and what is coming at us. For example, yeah. uh, Second Chronicles 20, it talks about Jehoshaphat um, going through uh, a trial where he's dealing with multiple uh, different different people, multiple people coming at him at the same time. And I remember going through a similar situation on my job where I was very young in a, in a position of um, uh, uh, an administrative position, very young. Um, and uh, I had an employer come to me and say she felt like she didn't think I was qualified for the position. And that was one of the things that was going on in the job. And there were some other things coming at me all at once. And that scripture when I went to it, when I went back to it, I understood that Jehoshaphat had a bunch of different groups coming at him, several different groups coming at him at the same time. And one of the things that he did was he prayed and he fasted and he asked God for direction. And because he asked God for direction, uh, the, the weapons that he was able to use was very different than what someone else may have used in a battle. He was able to use praise and worship. And I, I would agree with you that that God reveals the enemy's tactics and will give you direction in a situation through the word of God. Yep. Uh, and I, I, I truly believe that we can go to the word for daily, everyday issues that we're dealing with, whether it's in our finances, you know, we can go to the word that God, my God says, the word of God says that my God, by all of my needs, according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That's what the word says. Sure. I think that we can use the word to direct our lives. If if you're dealing with sickness in your body, you can say, God, your word says by your stripes, I'm healed. Right. We can go back to the word of God and utilize it in our own lives. I mean, the, the, the word of God is, is life. The yeah. word of God breathes life into a, a, a very dead situation, a tough situation. And so that 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 I, I would uh, totally agree that I have I've had many situations. I can sit here all night and tell you <laughs> situations where the word of God has just kept me and the word of God has just led me into where um, even where I can see where the enemy is going to try to attack before it comes. So absolutely. That's, that's so real. And let me just interject. Uh, for those of you that are watching tonight, if you have a question, comment, or you want to share with Ashley and I, uh, for those of you that I've personally invited, you you have my text, uh, my phone number to text me, email me, tweet me, Facebook me, however you need to get in contact with me, do, do so. And for those of you that know Ashley, you can do the same, get directly in contact with her, and I'm sure she'll let me know that she'll get, get a message. Um, but let's get back to, to what we're talking about tonight, vision and purpose. And I think what we're talking about with uh, the utilization of scripture is so relevant to the topic tonight. Can you share with someone who's watching um, how do they fulfill their vision in God and through God? And what does this mean and how did all this work? How does all this work? Well, as I said in the beginning, that 
all of us have a purpose. We've all been placed on this earth for an assignment um, that God has given to us even before we were formed in our mother's womb. God knew us and he knew what he had in store for us. And so it is our job to really seek out that plan. And that is through prayer and again, through um, the scriptures and understanding the word of God in our lives. And one of the things that, you know, is very important in understanding our purpose and understanding what God is wanting to do in our lives and where he's leading us is to seek God first for direction. The Bible says to seek ye first the kingdom of God and everything else will be added unto you. And so I, you know, I often say that many of us, we seek the wealth, we seek the houses, the cars, and the the materialistic things um, out of life. But if we seek God first, everything else will be added to us. So all of those things uh, will come once we seek God's face and seek God's desire for our own lives. One of the things that I've said in my life is that I do not want to ever be out of the will of God. Right. My entire life, I want to be in God's perfect plan and his perfect will for my life. And the way to do that is to really seek God about what his plan is. God, direct my daily steps. Put me in the path uh, to meet whoever you're calling me to meet. God, uh, allow me to find the scripture that's going to open up, you know, my understanding about a situation uh, or lead me in the path that you desire me to go into. I remember a few years ago, uh, I, uh, went for a degree in educational technology. And uh, at the time, I wasn't using it. I didn't see a whole lot of jobs out there for educational technology. But a few years later, currently in that position where I'm utilizing that tool that God had given me at that time. And so we may not know why God is leading us on a path or why he is leading us in a certain direction. We may not see it at the moment, but when we seek God's faith, when we seek God first, he can lead us into the direction that he has for our lives and what he wants to do. We have to pray and ask God for direction and then make sure that even the plans that I make, because we all have the, you know, we have our plans that we make and in five years, we want to own a a new business or in 10 years, we want, you know, to have a, a big house or, You know, we all have plans and we all make these big plans, but we have to really say, God, I need you to take these plans and I need you to, if you need to change them, change them. If you want to direct me in another direction, do it. God, whatever you want to do, God, my desire is to seek your will, not my will, but thy will be done in my life. And so in order to do that, we really have to seek God. And what do I mean by seeking God? Praying daily, asking him for direction. That is a daily thing. I had a friend tell me the other day, she said, You pray for direction all the time. And I I say, yes, absolutely, because I need God to direct my steps every day, every minute. I need to hear his voice and I need to know, you know, what I need, what what the next step is. And uh, that's come. That comes from daily communion with the Lord Um, and also reading of scripture. Like I said, the word is is a lamp unto our feet. It's a light unto our path. It leads us in the direction that we need to go into. The word of God really illuminates situations where even it may seem dark and you may not understand what to do, but the word of God can, can bring light to a very dark situation. And so, um, that's one of the first keys, uh, uh, that it, it, you really have to see God first. You really have to see God's face. Um, you know, a lot of times we seek advice from other people, but it's really God who is going to speak to us and give us the insight that we need to fulfill our purpose. And then secondly, uh, uh, from coming from a back or two, which was already mentioned, it you know it says write the vision and make it plain. We have to write the vision that God has given us and put it in a place where it can daily remind us of what the vision is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and why do I say put it in the place where you can be reminded of it all the time? Because the vision that God gives you may not come to pass right now. In Ecclesiastes, it, it talks about there's a time, there's right. a time for, there's a time to be born, there's a time to reap, there's a time to sow. There is a time that God wants to fulfill his vision in your life. And in order for you to really uh, come into the place where you understand that timing, it, it's going to take you praying and seeking God's face. That's why the word of God says, though it tarry, wait for it. Because God knows that there, there are some things that he shows us that he knows that we're not ready for it right now, but he's letting us know ahead of time that he's preparing us for it. Uh, I'm sorry. I know. I appreciate that. And I think one of the things that probably needs to be said, and this has been shared in our previous sessions, when okay. you talk about praying and asking God for his will for our lives, 
Uh, for those of you who have been watching the past couple weeks, you, you're familiar with the scripture, James chapter 4. Um, I can read verses 2 through 4, but pretty much what James talks about is you have all these desires and you have all these wants, and the reality is you're not getting what you ask for. The reason for that is because you're asking for things that are so out of order for you. You're asking for them out of jealousy, uh, out of a want for somebody else's stuff, and you're not really asking for it based on what God is doing inside of you. And what he later says is you know not to ask for it because you know you're not supposed to have it. And I think actually as we kind of assess uh, what we go through on a daily basis, when we look at the plans that we make personally for our lives, a lot of those plans are based on can, based on ideas that we have gathered from the lives of other people. Not that other people aren't great examples, and I think they are, but I think part of that creates a challenge for us when we look at those plans and we try to decipher how much of that plan is based on what God is doing in me versus what I saw somebody else doing, and I want to do the same thing. I think as we mature in our faith, as we mature in this life, that assessment, that reassessment of those plans uh, begin to take a different shape because what tends to happen later, uh, as, as David talked about uh, in Psalm 37, uh, as we trust God more, he will give us the desires of our heart. He will begin to plant those desires there that he wants us to have. Um, and I think that's a great segue um, into more of what you have to share about tonight. Um, when we talk about purpose, when we talk about finding destiny, um, I know you shared that we need to pray, and I know you shared that we need to seek God. Uh, kind of simplify for us the difference between God doing his work to expose us to our destiny versus the work we got to do to find our destiny. Absolutely. The Bible says, and I believe you've mentioned this in some of your other uh, Bible studies, is faith without works is dead. That's right. We have That's right. to put action behind our faith. And, uh, you, you know, we can't just sit back and say, well, the Bible says wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Yes, wait doesn't mean you sit there idly until something happens. But waiting means that I'm listening to the voice of God while continuing to do his work and his will for my life. Uh, you know, like, I, like, like we're saying, you know, faith without works is dead. So one of the things you have to do to fulfill your vision is, you have to write it out and you have to plan how you're going to do it. What are the many steps? What are the steps along the way that are going to lead me into where God is telling me? You know, maybe God is, is telling you to open up a business, but you don't have a business plan. Well, perhaps it's now time to put that faith into action and produce a business plan. Let's do something about what God has told us he wants to do in our lives. Mm -hmm. We have to put this thing, there has to be some action. Yes, God is miraculous and God is able to provide and, and do anything. But there is some action that we have to take. You know, God uses us on the right. earth uh, to fulfill his purpose and his will. And so we have to take on those actions and become doers of the word and do what, you know, we feel that God is leading us into. So make the plan and then you need to actualize that plan. Uh, in Proverbs 21 verse 5, it talks about how planning leads to abundance. Okay. Planning leads to the abundant life. We have to plan in order to be successful in our businesses. We have to plan in order to be successful in our finances, even with our children and how we raise our children. That happens through a plan. And so when we plan, make plans and, and we seek God's face about it and he directs us uh, our steps in life, then we can see that his plan will lead us into the abundance of, of, of an abundant life. Um, and I believe that, yes. So so let's go a little deeper. Mm -hmm. um, it, several times you've mentioned um, opening up a business, and we hear preachers mention that in church and in their sermons. Um, sometimes to people who hear that, they get kind of jaded by that because it, it seems to suggest that God is overly concerned with wealth and money. If I'm watching this broadcast, how do I know that I am called to open a business? Or how do I know that my calling is elsewhere, um, perhaps being a servant to someone else who has a business? How do I make that differentiation? 
I really think it goes back to seeking God's face uh, mm-hmm. about that, um, really hearing God's voice in that situation. I mean, really seeking to understand what what is your purpose for my life, as you, you mentioned before. And, and I talked about it, too. You know, a lot of people can have a vision for you and where they see you going. But unless you get into the word and you, you talk to God for yourself and really listen to his voice for yourself, you won't know which way to go. Um, and sometimes God leads us down a path where we say, well, this can't be the will of God. Or this can't be the path that he, he's leading me into. However, it's the path that he's leading us into to to process us. Even right. you think of Joseph, um, you know, he had a dream of, you know, being second in command and his brothers bowing to him. However, um, it took him going through the pit. It took him going through prison, Potiphar's house. So all of these things were steps mm-hmm. along the way for him to get into his purpose. And yeah, yes, um, as, as ministers and preachers of the gospel, we talk about, you know, God prospering us because it's a part of the word of God and it and it it's more than it more than possible God is able to do that. Um, but what I'm saying is that we really have to seek God's plan for our lives so that we know which direction to go into. And even in Joseph's life, we see that there was a bigger purpose and a bigger plan that God had for him. Um, but there was some things he had to walk out and daily we have to seek God. And I think I, we've been talking about that that daily seeking God for what he desires and what he wants to do in our lives, and then really hearing his voice. Hey, it, it, when you mentioned Joseph, what went through my mind was, as I was going to mention, many people like the quote, uh, I'm called to be the head, not the tail. I'm called to be the lender, not the borrower. When you talk about Joseph, and we all know the story of Joseph, Joseph was in a position where he was, in fact, not a lender nor a borrower. However, in his life, he was the head and not the tail. Is it face is it fair to say that regardless of what position we're in, the goal at the end of the day is to be the best that God has called and ordained us to be, no matter what that position is, whether we're in a position to lend, which kind of signifies owning a business, or whether we're in a position to lead, which signifies uh, I consider myself the chief servant. That means I serve all. I mean, what what are your thoughts about that? Absolutely. I think um, we are called to be excellent in whatever God has called us to do. Um, And that was one of the reasons why Joseph got promoted was because he had an excellent spirit in everything he did. He did it well. He did it with integrity. When he went to Potiphar's house um, and Potiphar's wife began to try, you know, to seduce him, um, he said no, because I have a job to do and I want to do it well. I want to do it with integrity. And whatever God gives us in puts in our hands, we should do it well to the best of our ability and have an excellent spirit. Even like Daniel, Daniel had an excellent spirit. Everything he did, he did it well. And he did it uh, as unto the Lord. Even in our jobs, we we ought to do it. It may not be, you may not work in a church or um, in a ministry setting. However, whatever you put your hands to do, it ought to be done well because you are representing Christ. You are doing the work of the Lord, whether it's in a church or wherever you are. You are doing the Lord's work. And so we ought to do it well and with a spirit of excellence. Um, and I, I think that's important in any, in any area of life. We, we ought to have an excellent spirit. That's as a wife, as a mother, um, as a father, um, as a servant, as a lender, as a business owner, we have to have an excellent spirit. And I think that's where promotion comes. So here here's a, a scriptural thought to support what you're saying. Um, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 5. Uh, Bond servants, obey your earthly masters with fear and trembling, with a sincere heart as you would Christ. Not by eye service as people pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, rendering service with a good will as to the Lord and not to man. I guess what I want to kind of emphasize, regardless of the position that we're in, whether we're the lender, whether we're the leader, or, or whether we're the head, whether we have a high profile position, at the end of the day, all that we do is about serving God and giving him glory. And if you understand what Paul is writing here about the servant, the doulos, that means the person who knows that they have something to offer but still feels like what I have to offer means nothing unless it, it helps you as the person I report to, 
then you understand what it means to be humble in what you're doing and be in that spirit of excellence that you're talking about because the servant does not always put forward their suggestion because their suggestion may not be relevant to what's going on in that circumstance but rather what Paul is saying is I am serving at the interest or the best interest of the one I am uh, obliged to for many of those many of us who are watching this broadcast we are obliged to someone uh, that we report to in our jobs, right? And when we talk about purpose and destiny, it doesn't always equate or end with me having a business or having significant independent wealth or having those um, those uh, flashy materialistic things that kind of signify wealth in our society. Rather, our end game, besides going to heaven and seeing God in his glory, is to represent that glory here on earth. And for some of us, that is our purpose and that's our destiny. Absolutely. Absolutely. Whatever God has called us to do, whether it's in front of people or in whatever the assignment God has given us, we ought to do it well. Yeah. Um, every every role and position is important in the kingdom of God and it builds up his kingdom. And as long as we're glorifying God and building his kingdom, that's the important piece. So help help someone here um, who's watching this broadcast, who's watching you, who's hearing parts of your story. Talk about how challenging it is to find purpose, to find your purpose in this life. How hard has it been? How hard can it be? How challenging can people expect it to be? It is a challenge. It is a difficult process to find purpose. Um, and uh, for me, I can speak from my personal experience. Um, it's been a journey. Um, and like I said, I don't think it's ever going to end. Um, I think that I'm going to constantly be seeking God's purpose and his will for my lives. Um, I, I think that it's, it's a challenge because every season God transitions us and he, he kind of moves us to a different place. And it may not be, um, it may not be, um, uh, Maybe it's not a job or what have you, but it's him walking out his purpose in our lives in that particular season. Um, and for example, um, there was a season in my life where I was uh, very actively involved in the dance ministry, um, you know, trying to really find my place in, in church, you know, um, trying to find my place um, in that particular local body. And then, you know, when I moved on, there's another season where God led me to do some other things, working behind the scenes in ministry. And I found that this is where, you know, in this season, this is where God had me. And so I think um, finding our purpose is like, again, knowing the path that we believe God is leading us into. Um, it's a difficult journey. It is a challenge. But I, I believe that as we map out the word of God and understand scripture, we can know where God is leading us. For example, our purpose uh, requires us to even go through a preparation process. Mm -hmm. I'm reminded um, of, of David in 1 Samuel when uh, he is anointed king, right? He's anointed king. I believe it's in 1 Samuel 16. He's anointed king, but he doesn't become king until years later. Um, and so that you, you have to work out your purpose. And not that all of us are going to become king. He started out, he was a servant. Um, and everything that God does in our lives, there's a season, there's a time, there's a purpose. Um, and he's doing it for his glory and, and for something else that he wants us to do. Even when we look at the life of, of David and how he was able to, to slay uh, a lion and a bear before he got to Goliath. All of that was leading him into the other purpose that God had for him. So I believe that as our steps are being ordered, God is really leading us into the, the path that he would have us to go into. I, I think what I'm trying to say is there may not be just one thing that you're supposed to do. There may be a, a variety of things. Maybe in one season you're doing one thing and another season you're doing another. Um, but I think all of that comes through you really hearing the voice of God and knowing what he's wanting to do in your life. You're saying a mouthful, and I think what, what what I felt immediately hit my spirit when you talked about David was knowing with all certainty that he was anointed to be king. F forget that he became king later. We knew, know that. But you talked about him serving as a lowly servant 
as a maid, right? As a bedside musician, as a waiter, right? As a part of that process, I mean, for, for someone who's watching, perhaps you and I, uh, that is such a hard thing to go through because when we talk about purpose and destiny and vision and a life of living an active faith, to be honest, when we begin to find that purpose, when we begin to get an idea of what that purpose is, we want instantaneous reaction and movement. We want things right now. I mean, I, I'm anointed today. I want to be king tomorrow. I, I'm anointed today, and I want to be pastor tomorrow, or I, I, I know I want to get married, so I'm going to get married tomorrow. Right. Or I just got my degree and I want that promotion like right now because I got the energy and fervor to to kind of handle it. When the reality is all of us go through the same challenge that David went through, which is I'm anointed. I become aware. I become um, clear about my calling and purpose. But there is no instantaneous change that takes place. It is a process that we walk through. And the, the scripture I was going to bring up earlier when you were talking, uh, Romans chapter 5, uh, verse 3 says, Not only uh, that, but we rejoice in our sufferings because suffering leads to endurance. Endurance leads to character, and character leads to hope. And what I've taught in these series is that faith is a substance of things hoped for. Faith is the undergird. It is the foundation on which we build our faith. Mm -hmm. So if anybody who's watching this broadcast, if you are trying to live a life of living active faith, which means that you are putting behavior and activity behind your belief system, you are saying that I am supporting, my, my faith is supporting my hope. And my hope is based on the process that I'm going through. And let me encourage somebody tonight. You may be going through a David-like situation where you are anointed, you know your purpose, you know your value, you know where God is calling you, you know where God is taking you, and there seems to be no movement. It's not moving fast enough. The calling tonight and the prophetic word for you tonight is to be patient with the process. I got a question, Ashley, and instead of asking a question, I'm going to answer it. Uh, this question was about Joseph. Joseph ended up doing something that, quite frankly, might not have been on his radar. Right. He became number two in command, in effect, number one in command. And if you look at his trajectory, if you look at the process he went through, if you looked at where he started out as a lowly boy, the youngest of all of his brothers, I, I'm pretty sure he did not expect I'm going to end up being number two over an entire region or over an entire nation. The right. process God is calling you and taking you through, again, Paul calls it like this. He says, uh, uh, tribulations, um, endurance, character, and hope. When we go through that process, we have no idea what God is taking us through, why he's taking us through it, and how it's going to benefit us. There is a situation I'm going through right now, and, and I'm like any, anybody else. I want fast reaction. I want instantaneous movement. And I was talking to my wife about it, and she said something to me that I have not considered. And she said to me, perhaps... This slowness, the slowness that you're experiencing is, is a test of your character. Mm. Not only God is watching my character, which we all know he's seeing everything, but the people who may have their own process and their own pace of moving are watching my character and how I respond to the cir circumstance because it's not responding at the pace that I want because I want something right now. And so the challenge is how to be patient, mm. how to be faithful, how to be consistent, even while we are going through that process. Absolutely. The word of God says in uh, Proverbs 3, verse says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding, but mm -hmm. in all your ways acknowledge him and he will sure. do And so I think a lot of times we get that um, impatient, you know, where we feel like we want it right now. And yeah. of our society, we're in a microwave society. We want it now and we want it our way. Um, but the Bible says, trust in the Lord, put our full confidence on him, lean, you know, in him and trust him. Um, and he will direct our path. He's mm -hmm. the one who ultimately knows what his purpose is. And perhaps God has taken us through this long route, in our opinion, because he has to do some things in our heart. He has to take some things out that cannot go with us where he's 
us or maybe there's a person who I'm going to have to minister to who you're going to have to minister to that you're going to need to pull out of their season because you've already been through it yeah um and so um we have to just be be patient and really understand what God's purpose is and what he's doing you know yeah. we don't understand all the things that God is doing sometimes it does not even make sense to us you know God, why, why, why am I here? And why am I dealing with this? And why are you putting, you know, why, why am I feeling this way? And why are my friends betraying me? And why am I feeling rejected? Um, but we know that the Bible says, and this is even in my notes, that all things, for all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and are called according to his purposes. And so we know that it's going to work out for our good. It doesn't feel good. No. It doesn't always feel good. And it doesn't always feel like we deserve it. But it works out for our good in the end. And who knows, maybe someone is going to be blessed by your testimony, by your story um, that you're going to give at a later time because of this season that you've been through. So I would 110% agree with your wife in saying that maybe that this is God's time to perfect his purpose in us. Maybe this is God's time to perfect us. And I believe that's what he was doing in the life of Joseph. He was perfecting character. He knew that Joseph was going to have to deal with some very difficult situations. Um, and he said, listen, I got to put something in you that I know when it gets rough, uh, I know that you'll be able to deal with it. You'll have the wisdom of God, the knowledge and integrity, the character to do and become what God is fully you know, wanting you to become. It, it's, it's all a part of the plan. It's all a part of the purpose. It don't make sense sometimes, but it's all a part of the purpose. All I can do is SMH because, <laughs> I mean, Joseph went through some craziness yes. to get to this end result. And the question is, what does temptation have to do with ruling a nation? Mm. What does jail have to do with ruling a nation? Mm. What does the access and platform of power have to do with ruling a nation. When you talk about going through a season of prosperity, access to any and everything you want, there is an intentional discipline that has to be activated inside of you to not squander prosperity. Now, the correlation of prosperity I'm talking about with Joseph is, again, the seven years of prosperity where they knew there was going to be a famine, so Joseph needed the discipline to save some of the crops for a later season. Right. Well, how did God build that up in him? Well, we can look a couple chapters before that and look at the access he had to Potiphar's wife. Right. <laughs> Temptation is prosperity. It is sometimes prosperity is not all it's cracked up to be. Mm-hmm. Access to everything you think you want, access to everything you think will make you feel good, everything that will make you feel like you're on top. And his ability to practice discipline when he had access to something he certainly didn't have access to before certainly built that character of saying, you know what, in times of prosperity, I know how to be disciplined where I don't have to spend all the crops. And in contemporary times, I don't have to spend all my money. Mm -hmm. I don't have to buy every name brand thing that comes out. I don't have to copycat and look like anybody else. I don't got to pretend that I got money when the reality is I don't have money. I right. don't have to act like I am better than. I don't have to do those things because I know how to restrain my spirit. Right. Absolutely. Um, and and all, of, all of those things that we face, we may not understand it at the moment, but it is perfecting um, – us for a, a, a greater purpose and what God is, is really leading us into and directing us into. We don't know. We don't know at the moment, and, and Joseph didn't know at the moment. Yeah. But it really um, definitely uh, was what God was allowing to happen yeah. uh, so that he knew how to deal with certain things. Like I said earlier, David had to deal with the lion and the bear. If he had not dealt with those, the lion right. and the bear for the for the one sheep. That's right have known or had the um even the confidence in god to deal with the the, the giant but it yeah. was a preparation process and yeah. you know that he was able to tell saul look this is what i've done and this is how i know that i can defeat a giant because i i beat that lion and in, in, in that bear with a stone and so i know that this is uh something that i can do through the, the power of, of, of god yeah so i, I 
totally agree. All of this, all of the things that we deal with in life, it leads us to a greater purpose and, and, and God's purpose ultimately for our lives. And he and gets I, the glory out of it. And I'm assuming the story of David ties into uh, the ministry God has given you with giant slayers. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's, I mean, this is uh, something that I eat, sleep and, and breathe. I, 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 I love the life of David um, because of his ability to really um, deal with some of the, the challenges that he faced, having to be rejected by his father, rejected by his brothers, and, you know, then having to deal with um, rejection even by Saul. But rising to the occasion every time. Um, it, it's just f phenomenal to see um, through the word of God. And, and there's a lot of parallels, even in my own life with the life of David um, and some of the things that he, he had to do. So I, I think it's a powerful scripture, a powerful text. And for anyone who is uh, dealing with a season where you're not too sure, uh, you know, what direction you're going into and why you're dealing with certain things, read the life of David because it can really empower you um, and you can really see how, you know, God can lead you as a servant, you know, to, he can order your footsteps even as a servant into where he's wanting you to go into. So let, let's go a little deeper. Uh, you have here uh, Proverbs twenty nine eighteen, mm -hmm. and it reads, where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint. But blessed is he who keeps the law. And I'm going to read that again because um, I just think there's just so much in there. Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint. But blessed is he who keeps the law. So according to this scripture, Ashley, talk about the restraining order vision places on our behavior and why this restraining order is so valuable. Absolutely. Uh I am going there right now. Um, so as, as we uh, understand God's will, mm -hmm. understand God's purpose for our lives, um, it is very important for us to follow God's path according to the word of God and according to scripture. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking at, you know, both the, the lack of, the word and understanding and hearing the word of God and those who may not know the purpose of God due to, you know, not understanding, but, um, the word of God is talking about, um, knowing, I'm sorry, let me go back to the text where there's no revelation, the mm -hmm. people cast off restraint, but happy is he who keeps the law. And so we, we have to understand that there is, uh, there is a there's a requirement there's a condition um, to everything in the Word of God and everything that God requires in everything that God gives in Scripture there's a requirement and there's a there's a there's a there's a condition to it and so we have to understand that when uh, when there is no revelation of where we're going you can throw away your purpose you can throw away the vision that God is giving you um, but it's important to know the way to know the word um, so that you don't cast off the word in the vision that God is giving you here. Let me just share this with somebody. It, this, this scripture actually um, provided Proverbs 29, 18. I'm going to read this again. And I actually, I don't know what version you had before, but reread re read it after I reread read this one. Okay. I think this is the ESV that you got here where okay. there is no prophetic vision. The people cast off restraint, but blesses he who keeps the law. And what version did you, did you read earlier? This is the uh, NIV version. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what? And how does that go? Uh, it says, "Where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint." Uh, so, same thing with the prophet. Yeah. Um, but happy is he who keeps the law. The reason why I wanted to bring this back um, tonight, we've been talking about vision. We've been talking about purpose. You've reiterated over and over and over again in order to move forward in purpose and vision you have to seek god through prayer through supplication you got to be in the presence of god the version the niv version says revelation esv says prophetic vision uh king james version says vision let me kind of drill this point home about this particular scripture you need something that is so supernatural to speak into your mind in order for you to understand your purpose in this life. Now, notice what he is saying, where there is no revelation, where there is no prophetic vision, where there is no vision. 
the people cast off restraint. Without vision, you will have no discipline whatsoever. I don't know who I'm talking to this evening, but the reason why, if not one of the reasons why you're not achieving what you believe God has called you to achieve is because you have no discipline. And you have no discipline because you have no vision. You're not thinking long term. You have no revelation. You don't have any prophetic voice speaking to you. The vision serves as the standard by which you govern your behavior. Well, why is that important? Well, he says it in the rest of the verse. But blessed is he who keeps the law. Now, the law can be applied to mean the scriptures. It can be applied to mean the word of God. But let me suggest something new to somebody. The law that he's talking about here in Proverbs 29, 18 is, in fact, your plan and your vision. And now I know y'all still shaking your head and y'all trying to get this. But when you establish a vision, when you establish an action plan, a project plan, Ashley mentioned a business plan, that becomes the law of operation. Anything outside of that is illegal for your business or your life. Or the strategy that you're living out. That's why he's saying that this prophetic vision serves as a significant standard. It's a law. Without it, you won't be able to accomplish the things that you believe you want you want to accomplish. And there are people actually that I, I've I've met over my years um, who may look at some of the things that my wife and I have done and say, "Oh man, I, I wanted to do the same thing and I plan to do the same thing," but you know, this happened and that happened and this happened. And when they begin to explain and, and share their story, it becomes eerily clear that there was no vision. There was nothing there to guide them in the direction they needed to go into. They saw what other people had. They saw what they had and said, I want that, but did not have clarity of purpose, clarity of vision to say, I know this is what God has for me. And then secondly, if I know that's what God has for me, they didn't move forward in the next step to say, God, what's the actual plan, the strategy, the revelation to achieve or acquire what you have for me? I mean, what, what has been your experience with, with people or even yourself not having a plan versus having a plan in place? Yeah, I, I would agree. Um, failure to plan you're planning to fail. So when, mm -hmm. when you don't have a plan in place, you're automatically um, at a loss. Um, but I, I think it's very important for us to go back to something you mentioned and you were saying um, that um, without that discipline, the vision is the discipline. This is the path that is laid out before you. Sure. Yep. So that discipline in trying every day to work towards that vision that God is giving you. That's it, right. Discipline, and, I, and it's one of the fruit of the spirit, self-control, knowing That's right. how to, uh, you know, control your time. The Word of God says uh, in Colossians four and five, walk in wisdom towards outsiders, making the best use of your time, mm. um, using your time wisely, knowing how to, uh, you know, do things in a timely manner. Quote that scripture again, not to cut you off. Quote that script. Where was that at? Colossians four and five. Walk okay. in wisdom toward mm -hmm. outsiders yeah um, make the best use of the time that's right that's so right. we really have to discipline ourselves in the vision that God has given us and make the best use of our time and that's probably why many of us can say that we've seen success in certain things because we we utilize our time while others are maybe watching TV or doing other things we may be in the word and and we may be studying and doing different things because we understand that in order for this vision to come to pass, it's going to take discipline and sacrifice. And um, I may not be able to do what the others are doing at the moment. Um, that's right. But you know what? I have to use my time wisely in order to accomplish the purpose that, that I believe God is, is telling me and calling me to do. So let's make this a little bit more practical. You and I talked uh, last week yes, and discovered that you, myself, and my wife have something in common. Yes. Besides being in the same age category. Right. The three of us are blessed to be going through the doctoral process. Oh. Right? Yes. <laughs> fun times. Fun yes. times. Talk, when, when you talk in context of Proverbs 29, I'm going to read this again for somebody. 
But there's no prophetic vision. People cast off restraint, but blessed is he who keeps the law. When, when we talk in context of Proverbs 29, 18, and in context of the process you're going through, because getting a doctorate is more than just becoming Dr. Uh, Ramsey. It's more than the prestige. It is one of the most grueling and humbling processes you could go through. Talk about the discipline that you have learned and are learning as you kind of walk towards getting those three stripes on your robe. Oh, absolutely. Um, it 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 definitely requires sacrifice. Um, uh, particularly, like I was saying, you know, we may not be able to do what others are doing. Um, at the moment, but we're looking at the end goal. Um, we're looking at the end prize. This is a vision that I believe God is leading me into, and so it takes a lot of discipline. I'll, I'll tell you, honestly, uh, there's there were times this summer I took uh, some of what they call the most challenging courses this summer, and I I will tell you, I honestly, I probably spent maybe 40 hours a week. <laughs> honestly, 40 hours a week. Studying, reading, and um, writing. Right, lots of writing. And it's not just any writing, it's how, you know, scholarly writing. So yeah, yeah. Not brain power. Yeah. And so it is a major sacrifice and a major discipline. Um, and But I have learned to restrain myself from doing other things that I know are going to get in the way of me reaching that goal and that purpose. Yeah. And that's for anyone, even if you're not, you know, going for a docu doctorate or if you're, I mean, whatever you're going Whatever for, it is. Believe in God, is, you know, whatever you believe God to do in your life, you're going to have to show some discipline and some, I mean, it is a sacrifice. And there was, I had to, you know, tell certain commitments that I had. I had to say, you know what? Right now in this season, I cannot I can't. do that. Right. That's right. That's right. As of right now, I can. Even my professor, the first, you know, few classes, courses, they told us you're gonna have to prioritize. You're gonna have to let your family know. Yeah. You're gonna have to let your job know. Everyone. Yep. There's gonna be certain times where you're not gonna be able to reach me because this right now is a priority and it takes a great deal of time. And so anything you do. That's right. It, going to be done well and it's going to bring God glory. You got to do it with discipline to the best of your ability and be willing to restrain yourself. We're we're looking for the the end goal. I'm believing for that DR in front of my name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One day um and I believe I'm putting in the work now for for that greater goal. That is such a awesome Testimony. I mean, I, I was told the same thing when we started. Uh, when I started, my wife was told the same thing when she started. Um, and, and I want to reiterate what you said, which is it does not have to be an academic degree that you're pursuing. Some of you are pursuing uh, a new career or a career change. Some of you are newly dating or looking to get married. Some of you are building or developing or correcting your credit. Some of you are creating or establishing a business. Some of you are new to the body of Christ and looking to build up your faith. Some of you are new in ministry and have new ministry responsibilities. The concept of what Ashley just shared in terms of the discipline and the focus and the time um, and the restraint, the restraining order, talked about in Proverbs 29, 18, is applicable to anything that requires vision and purpose. Ashley, I, uh, as I finish the doctoral process, and even though I have a few semesters to go, that discipline has not gone away. Right. It, it has become even more stronger. I've had to let go of certain ministry responsibilities and obligations. Um, I, it has affected my preaching ministry. It, it, from the perspective of it has enhanced me, it has made me stronger, it has made me more apt and more qualified. Um, as you talked about, it has required brain power, brain attention, brain energy. I have not exerted so much brain energy ever before in my life till I got into this program. It has made me more judicious in how I expend my time and my energy. I am not quick to be in any and everything because my time is precious. My time is important to me. My brain power is too valuable to me, and I cannot afford to share it with any and everybody just because you ask. There has to be something 
that is strategically aligned with the purpose for my life in this season, or else I'm going to have to practice restraint, as talked about in Proverbs 29, 18, right. and obey the law, which is for right now, finish this degree. And for anybody that has been watching this series of living faith, as you quoted my scripture, my theme scripture for my ministry, theme scripture for the series, faith without works is dead. Okay. You have to take what Ashley said to heart. Forget the fact that she talked about a PhD program. F forget all that. You need that discipline in order to live a life of faith. Once you found out what your purpose is, once you stop being selfish and prideful, once you stop asking for things just because you saw somebody else have it, once you figured out that God has ordained something for you, once you've heard the voice of God, Isaiah chapter 30, one of my favorite scriptures, uh, Ashley, it says that uh, uh, as you move forward, he will give you a teacher who will speak in your ear. He will let you know whether to go left or whether to go right. Mm -hmm. Once you've affirmed that you heard God's voice, you now have to create that law in your life. Whether it's a business plan, a project plan, an action plan, an academic plan, a life plan, a financial plan, a family plan, a kid raising, a kid producing plan, whatever it is. And that becomes the law or the discipline. Ashley, I know that you have... Um, some steps that you wanted to kind of share with the group. Um, if you want, you can go through those steps now and, and kind of just walk us through those steps uh, in terms of how to build a life of vision and purpose. Um, well, we kind of went through some of them already. Mm -hmm. um, one was seeking God first for, di for the direction for our lives. And then the second one was writing the vision and making it plain. And then third was making the plan and writing it out um, and actually putting it in a visible place where you can see it. Sure. Managing our time wisely. And then mm. the last part was run with the vision, um, uh, which requires faith and trust in God. Yeah. Um, we know in Habakkuk 2, it tells us to write the vision, make it plain. Um, we're writing it so those who are coming behind us, when we leave it, they can pick up and carry on. Mm. Um, they can run with the vision uh, mm. that God has given to us. So that tells me that the vision God has for me is not just for me. Mm. Many times we go and we walk out this purpose and this vision that God has for us and we say, oh, God, you know, this is so great. You know, this is something you want me to do. But there are people, there are lives connected to us fulfilling the vision and purpose of God for our oh lives. My. Oh, my. And so he's wanting us to write it down, make it plain so that those who are coming behind can take up the mantle, can take up the vision and can run with it. Um, and our vision will be fulfilled, whether we fulfill it. In our lifetime or not, it's written down and the vision is laid out plain uh, so that others may run with it. And that was one of the last uh, um, steps was running with the vision um, and, and trusting God in faith that it will come to pass. Whether you fulfill it or not, remember that lives are connected to the vision that God has given you. That statement that lives are connected to that vision applies to leaders who are watching this particular broadcast. For those of you who are leading ministry, who are looking to lead a business, who are leading families, those of you who are leading segments or departments and on your job, your vision is not about you and you mm -hmm. only. We need t time out for selfishness, time out mm -hmm. for self-centeredness, Absolutely. time out for being all about you. Because th this life, this, this whole thing, this whole very existence is, is not about you. It is one about him who created you and I. And then it's about the people, Ashley, that you talked about who are coming behind us, coming alongside us, who may not have their own vision and purpose identified yet, but has been ordained to find that purpose and vision once we found ours. One of the first Bible studies I did for this Living Faith broadcast was about King Josiah, young king at eight years old. And, you know, what... I focus on the fact that he found his faith, um, and what ultimately happened was Josiah became a blessing to somebody almost eight to ten years later because he found his faith. Absolutely. The people he ended up blessing, as I pointed out in a Bible study, were the brick workers, were the construction men who were just average, everyday guys who were commissioned to build the house of God because Josiah found his faith. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't realize that 
and I taught in that Bible study actually that sometimes our life and our process is based on on a Josiah who's taking his time to bless us and come into our lives as God has ordained. But let me flip this around based on what you're talking about. Sometimes we are the Josiah. Wow. We are the ones people who are waiting for. We are the ones who has the livelihood of somebody in our hand. But because of selfishness, because of pride, because of hard-headedness, because of disobedience, because of not hearing the voice of God, we not only slow ourselves down, we slow down the blessing of somebody else who's trying to hold on and wait for God to come through and bless them. Let me encourage somebody who's watching tonight. Absolutely. You need to be obedient. It is. It goes beyond you, as Ashley talked about. It goes beyond what you want to do for yourself. As he talked about in James chapter uh, 4, I believe, that you ask for things because you want to harp upon uh, your flesh and satisfy the lust of your flesh. It is beyond that. Somebody, somebody who's considering suicide mm. may be prevented from committing suicide if you just be obedient. Yeah. And it may not be tomorrow, it may not be next week, but your obedience may pay off two years from now when that person is faced with a decision. Someone who is considering fornicating or considering adultery, someone who's considering leaving the faith, someone who's considering cussing somebody out, mm. somebody who's considering blowing all their resources and all their money and wasting their life and wasting their purpose, they can stop right there in their tracks. As long as you be obedient and follow the purpose and vision that God has ordained for you. Ashley, I, I don't know how else to say it. I don't know if I can say it any better than what you said already, that this vision is connected to other people. Yeah, it's bigger than you. It's bigger than you. It's bigger than what you can even think or imagine. It's bigger. And uh, so we really have to write it out, make it plain, and so that others who come behind can really run with it. And, and I truly believe that. I truly believe that that there's somebody else connected to us fulfilling our purpose. Someone is someone else is connected to us, you know, living out our life and, and living out our testimony so that they can follow behind us. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Do you have any closing thoughts um that you want to share with the audience tonight before we pray and and uh adjourn for the evening? Absolutely. Uh be not weary in the midst of well-doing, for in due season you're going to reap if you faint not. You know what? I know many times in, in the process of trying to fulfill our purpose and walk out the plan that God has for us, we get a little weary. We get a little tired sometimes. But be encouraged in knowing that if he begun a work in you, he's going to finish it. He's going to bring it to its completion. It may not look like it's going to finish right now. It may not look um, like it's ever going to turn around, but know that in the midst of this situation, in the midst of where you are right now, you may not be where you want to be. Um, however, God is perfecting you, like we've already said, and he's developing your character so that there is a greater purpose and a greater good. And remember that someone else is connected to you fulfilling your purpose and fulfilling your dreams and your goals. There's someone waiting for you to rise up, even for those of you who've not even tried or not even written it down. Someone's waiting. Think about that. Someone's waiting for you to rise up and to fulfill your great purpose and the, the plan that God has for you. So definitely be encouraged um, and know that we are praying and, um, and we, we're going to be praying with you and for you. I think that's an awesome way to um, end tonight's discussion. I pray that all of you that have been watching over the past four weeks and especially tonight, that you were blessed. Um, I pray that you were blessed uh, by Pastor, um, uh, the pastor that shared with us uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, it was it was it was an amazing, amazing thing. Um, we've had some awesome guests, Ashley, and, and certainly you, you've added to that. Um, but let me pray, and Ashley, I'll come back to you in one quick moment after we pray. Okay. Father, I thank you so much. I thank you so much for your grace and your mercy. I thank you for your purpose. I thank you for the vision that you have given us. Father, I thank you because you've been faithful and consistent in our lives. And Father, I thank you for teaching us how to live a life of faith, how to be purposeful and meaningful with the life that you've given us. Father, even though we're moving on from this series, I pray that this series has encouraged someone to pursue their God-given purpose with all that they have. I pray that someone has been encouraged to live a life of faith faith that is active, faith that's full of life and that's vibrant, that brings you glory and brings you honor. 
And Father, I pray that for those that uh, are new to the faith, that they are strengthened, that they are encouraged to continue to seek out this gospel in all of its counsel, in all 66 books. And we pray these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, Ashley, before we, we sign off, um, did you have any um, thing you wanted to share, plug, uh, market before we, we, we step off of the evening? Absolutely. Uh, coming up on this weekend um, at my local oh. Rehoboth Church of God, Okay. Uh, we're having a vision board event. Um, so I'm not sure if anyone's in the area, but if you are in the area, we'd love for you to be a part of that. Um, and it's all about um, you know, mapping out your future and what you plan on doing. Like I said, you're, when you're writing the vision, you want to put it in a space that you can look at it every day and, and bring it back to your memory um, to just remind you every day, this is my goal. And even sure. at home, for those of you who may not be in the area, this is something that you can do uh, on your own time is actually making a vision board um, and keeping it in a place. I keep mine in my room so I can look at it every day and I can see where I'm, I'm going. So if you're in the area, come to Rehoboth Church of God on Saturday at 4 p.m. and we'll be doing our vision board event. As well, well as there's a Bible study with um, Minister uh, Clark <laughs> coming oh, up. Yeah. February, I believe it's the 16th? 18th. I think. 18th. 18th. Yeah. Um, and we're going to be um, doing that. But I'm sure you'll give information about that as well. Yeah, and I think we're going to be live in Connecticut for that one. Oh, so, wow. awesome! Yeah, slight change. Awesome. I thought I thought you were going to mention um, the Big Life Conference with Gary Knighton this as weekend. Well, yeah, yeah. That, that's coming up as well on the th uh, that's the thirtieth and the thirty first. Yeah. I'll be there as well, um, participating in that, and that's going to be awesome. Uh, it's for uh, anyone who wants to come, um, say you know, Christian, non Christians, anyone who wants to just learn more about God. It's an awesome, awesome event. I was a part of it last year, and I'm going to be a part of it again this year and um, so if you're interested let us know um, and we will definitely get you information about that yep that well, first the living God in Hartford Connecticut on Friday and on Saturday it's gonna be where again first Church of the Living God on Whitney Street I can't okay. remember the exact address but it's on Whitney Street okay so for those of you watching Ashley and I um, text us call us tweet us and we'll get you the address to the conference this weekend Ashley I I had a great time Absolutely. Um, I am renewed and rejuvenated by these type of conversations, so I thank God for um, allowing you to come on and share, and I'm sure you were a blessing to many of those that were watching this evening. I was blessed as well. Thank you for inviting me to be a part of it. All right, guys. Love y'all. Talk to y'all later. God bless you. Um, contact me. Let me know what you think about tonight. Tell me how blessed you were. Tweet me, Facebook me, text, email. Saying smoke signals, whatever you got to do. Yes. Let me know how things went. And we'll talk to you guys later. God bless yeah. you.